Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Lisa Banya Robles, Doctor of Theology, General Manager of Manila Hearing Aid. Welcome, everyone, to the second episode of our online webinar series, Ear to Aid. Um, we noticed a lot of you have been asking about the ringing in your ears, or the ugong sa tenga. This is what is called tinnitus, which is our focus for today. Thank you to everyone who asked questions for our webinar today, for our Facebook page and Hearing Wellness Forum, and we'll be answering the most asked questions tonight. Our speaker for tonight is someone you might have seen in our posts before this event. He is an expert in our topic for today. He is a doctor of audiology specializing in tinnitus and decreased sound tolerance disorders. He's also a professor of audiology and he was actually my professor for my doctorate degree in the U.S. So without further ado, let me introduce to you Dr. James Hall. Thank you very much, Lisa, for that introduction. I'm going to present uh, a little overview about tinnitus for anyone who has perceived tinnitus, who has experienced it, and who is suffering from it. And then after the overview, we'll have time for questions, questions that might be on your mind about tinnitus. As Lisa mentioned, I'm a professor at uh, several universities, including uh, a university called Salus University, where I am at this very moment. The campus is behind me. Um, I have an email address and a website, and I encourage you to check out the website. And of course, you can always contact me by email if you have follow-up questions. Let's go on to the next slide. So, um, Dr. Hall, to start off tonight, we collected questions from all of you via Facebook and Instagram story, and also on our teaser posters. To start off, we'll be answering all the common questions most of you are asking in our socials. Okay, but I, I should go ahead with my presentation first. Is that correct? Exactly. Yes. Okay, well, I'm going to cover these topics very briefly, just a quick overview. First, I'm going to explain what tinnitus is, and then I'll provide a very, very brief update on all of the research that is being conducted about tinnitus. I'll discuss what, would, what you would undergo if you came to an expert for a tinnitus assessment, what kinds of tests um, you would be involved in. And then uh, I'm gonna emphasize some of the management options for people who have bothersome tinnitus. I wanna make sure you understand there are many management options available. And then I'll conclude with the bottom line, which is there is hope for everyone with, with tinnitus. Next slide. Now, I've been using the word tinnitus. That's the, the way that most professionals pronounce the term. Some people uh, use the pronunciation tinnitus, and either of those is correct. The word tinnitus actually is derived from the Latin word for ringing. And ringing, of course, is, is the most, one of the most common types of sounds that a person will hear. Tinnitus is a sound that a person is really hearing. They really actually hear a sound, and yet there is no external sound. There's no outside sound that's, that's uh, creating this perception of sound. So it's called a phantom auditory perception, but it is real. People who hear tinnitus are really hearing it. Now, bothersome tinnitus really impacts quality of life. And we're, we're going to talk in a moment about the different ways that bothersome tinnitus can, can really affect uh, the day-to-day -day existence of a person. Now, some people have tinnitus and it doesn't bother them, but we're gonna focus on the tinnitus that really impacts quality of life. The one point I really need to make, and I would emphasize to my patients uh, whenever I met with them in the clinic, tinnitus is real. It's not imagined, and it's not just in your head. Now, some people, when they go to a physician, are told there's nothing wrong with your hearing, there's nothing wrong with you, and uh, the patient begins, to, or the person with tinnitus begins to wonder, well, why am I hearing this? Uh, you, know, you know, is there something wrong with me? Am I imagining this? But that's not the case. Tinnitus is real. And the final point, tinnitus is not a disease. There's no pill for tinnitus. You can't go to take some type of medicine to eliminate it. There's no surgery for tinnitus. Tinnitus is a symptom. It's a symptom of something. And we try to find out what 
uh, is causing the tinnitus. If tinnitus is bothering you, then it is definitely a disorder. The next slide. These are just some of the types of tinnitus sounds that people hear. These types of sounds are actually from the first 100 people with bothersome tinnitus that I evaluated many, many years ago. And other people have produced similar lists. The most common sounds that a person hears are something like a ringing or a cricket sound, a kind of a, uh, a insect sound or a high pitched tone. But to be honest, uh, there's no way of really knowing what type of tinnitus sound a person hears. Only they can, can hear it. And of course, it's very difficult to describe. The main point I'm going to make here is whatever sound you might be hearing in your ears uh, is not necessarily worse or more challenging than the next sound. It, it simply means that you're hearing a sound <clears throat> that is not related to an external sound. But the type of sound you hear <clears throat> pardon me, is not um, a concern, shouldn't be of any concern to you. Pardon me for one moment. I'm going to grab my glass of water. Next slide. These are some of the typical characteristics and complaints that a person with tinnitus has. And you can see this, this can really impact somebody's day-to-day -day life. Tinnitus can make you very tired, it can make you restless, can make you irritable. Even a, a person who's normally very pleasant will sometimes uh, lose patience with others because of their tinnitus. It can interfere with your ability to concentrate, to read, to perform your job. Uh, it can sometimes lead to uh, sadness and crying uh, when a person wouldn't normally cry. And very often people with tinnitus feel as if it's hopeless. There's nothing they can do for it. It really reduces quality of life. And one of the most serious problems that tinnitus can lead to is sleeping problems. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. So tinnitus is a serious health problem and it really needs to be dealt with directly by a tinnitus expert. Next slide. There is um, quite a bit of research on tinnitus and how prevalent or how common tinnitus is. And this research has been done around the world. Now, I'm not aware of any studies of prevalence or how often people have tinnitus in the Philippines, but this is a recent study that I'm showing you here, a publication in the United States, very recent, <clears throat> 2016. And if we can go to the next slide, I'll just toss out a few numbers. I wanna make the point that tinnitus is not uncommon. <clears throat> one in 10 adults, one in 10 will comment that they actually hear sounds in their ears most of the time. And for 36%, one third, it's almost constant. Every day they're hearing these sounds. And for 7%, people describe it as a big problem or even a very big problem. Now, one challenge we have is that physicians, doctors, primary care doctors, they don't know much about tinnitus, They're certainly not about recent research. So very often they patient, the person with tinnitus, does not talk about it with their doctor. And when they do go to the doctor for help, medical management is most often uh, discussed. And unfortunately, there is no medical management for tinnitus. There's no medical cure for tinnitus. So we need to educate physicians uh, more about tinnitus. Next slide. Now, some people are at greater risk for tinnitus. In other words, some people are more likely to experience bothersome tinnitus than others. And these are some of the risk factors. If you have a hearing loss, you're more likely to have tinnitus than if you have perfectly normal hearing. It's more likely that you will experience tinnitus as you uh, age, as you get older. Uh, tinnitus is extremely uncommon in, in children, but as a person gets into their 50s and 60s and 70s, it's more common. The exposure to high intensity noise or music is often a big risk factor. So if you're exposed to a loud music at a concert or during while you're working, some other type of noise or music, it's not uncommon to hear tinnitus after that. And then there are certain health conditions or, or health problems, diseases that are associated with tinnitus. And so of course there you want to get as much medical help for those problems, diabetes, arthritis, as you possibly can. Smoking 
is a big risk factor. In fact, recent research just within the last 10 years confirms that smoking, chronic smoking, a pack a day or more, is probably the biggest risk factor for tinnitus. In other words, if you smoke heavily, it's almost certain that you will experience tinnitus. So cessation of smoking, stopping smoking is one of the best things anyone can do uh, for their tinnitus. And then there are some medications that are associated with tinnitus, but in most cases, uh, uh, that's not a major risk factor because the medications can be modified and the tinnitus is no longer a problem. Next slide. Now, very quickly, there's a lot of research on tinnitus. Tinnitus has been studied extensively for the last 25 years, and we know quite a bit about what causes tinnitus and what to do about it. Next slide. Tinnitus is almost always uh, related to problems in the ear. So in the upper right-hand corner, you see a diagram of the ear. And the inner ear, the really important part of the ear, uh, inside a very thick bone in your head, is where most of the tinnitus originates. There's almost always some problem in that the ear. But then the ear is connected, of course, to the brain. And so to hear tinnitus, to know you have sound in your ears, the brain is being activated when it really shouldn't be. The brain is uh, responding to signals from the ear, but, it, but really there's no outside sound. And this can be proven with different uh, techniques such as magnetic resonance imaging. Now, if you really are bothered by your tinnitus, you don't just hear it, but it actually is making you upset. It's getting you angry, it's frustrating you, it's interfering with your life. Then we know there are other parts of the brain also involved. This is nothing you can control. This is not a psychological problem so much as it's, it's actually a, an automatic response of the brain to these sounds that you do not understand. But fortunately, there's plenty of research on tinnitus and tinnitus experts can use this information to help a person with tinnitus uh, get to the point where it's no longer a problem for them. Next slide. Now, if you go in for a tinnitus uh, evaluation, or you go to a, an audiologist or a ear, nose, and throat doctor for help for your tinnitus, there will be a certain number of tests that you will probably take. Next slide. Of course, someone will examine your ear, they'll take a close look at it, and then you'll be asked to fill out some questionnaires or some inventories uh, to find out how the tinnitus is really impacting your life. You'll also get a complete hearing assessment. You may go into a sound treated room, such as you see in this slide. And then the uh, health professional will probably measure your tinnitus. They'll try to learn more about your tinnitus during the assessment. Next slide. As I said at the beginning, management of tinnitus, that is getting help for tinnitus is possible. And there are many options available to you. Next slide. The first step that I take, that anyone would take in evaluating a person with bothersome tinnitus is to rule out medical problems. Some diseases, some ear problems, some other medical problems can cause tinnitus. So we want to eliminate those immediately. Of all the people with bothersome tinnitus, very, very few have any of these medical problems. But we do want to make sure that that's the case. We don't want to leave a medical problem untreated. One of the most important things that we can do, I can do, audiologists can do for people with bothersome tinnitus is to explain what it is to people, to provide accurate information and to counsel the person, to give them very simple suggestions and uh, guide, guidance on how to manage their own tinnitus. If you are hearing sounds in your ears that are unrelated to the sounds around you, one of the most important things you can do, and all of you can do this right now, is to start, start surrounding yourself with soft, pleasant sound. You don't want to be hearing only the sounds in your ears. You want to be hearing the other sounds uh, of, in the, your, your environment. There are also some lifestyle changes you can take. We know that a healthier diet is associated with uh, less chance for tinnitus. Exercise is, is very, very important. As I mentioned before, smoking is directly related to tinnitus. So if you stop smoking, that will be a step in the right direction. And then 
anything you can do to get a good night's sleep. Sleep hygiene. There's plenty of information on how to uh, sleep better. All of that will help you with your tinnitus. Now, research clearly shows that if you have any problem with your hearing, a hearing aid or amplification, making sounds in your environment a little bit louder will help tremendously because your brain will stop, will begin to listen to these interesting sounds and, and it will not pay attention to your tinnitus. There are also devices, including hearing aid type devices that will produce a sound that will kind of interfere with the sounds that you're hearing, the tinnitus sounds, and kind of distract you from listening to the tinnitus. That's very helpful. And then there are other treatment options available um, that are very successful. They've been proven through research to help people with bothersome tinnitus. Next slide. Okay. I would encourage you to seek out, if you have bothersome tinnitus, if it's really interfering with your life, seek out accurate information. This is a, in a little article that I wrote some years ago for a journal or a magazine called Tinnitus Today, which you can access online. Uh, there are also brochures and flyers that provide accurate information about tinnitus. The more you understand tinnitus, the less it will concern you. Next slide. Now, I mentioned that sleep problems are, are always a serious concern for people with bothersome tinnitus. And that by surrounding yourself by so, with soft sounds, uh, you can minimize your hearing the tinnitus. And that's particularly true at night. At nighttime, when you're going to sleep and it's very quiet, that's usually the time when people are most bothered. So I would encourage you to consider getting online and buying a pillow that produces soft, pleasant sound, whatever sound you want to listen to. And as you're about to go to sleep, your tinnitus, the sounds you are bothered by, will not be very prominent. You will not notice them so much because you'll be hearing a soft, pleasant sound through the pillow uh, directly into your ear. So this is a simple thing that you can do to help yourself. Next slide. There are also substances, they're not drugs, they're natural substances that will reduce your tinnitus, that, that you won't hear it as loudly. And one of those substances that has been studied is melatonin. So in most countries, you can buy melatonin anywhere. It's very safe. You follow the directions on, on the uh, doses. It's not, you, you don't take much. And melatonin helps you in two ways. It reduces the tinnitus sound, but it also helps you get a more restful night's sleep. So it's very useful. And you can do this yourself as well. Next slide. Hearing aids, as I said, are very, very helpful. If you have any degree of hearing loss, even a very, very slight hearing loss, I would encourage you to seek out audiology services and to consider hearing aids, not so much as a hearing aid, but as a tinnitus device. And almost all of the manufacturers of hearing aids also provide software for tinnitus. So this is probably the most important thing you can do that requires you to go to a professional. Get an assessment, a hearing assessment, get a tinnitus assessment from the professional and consider wearing hearing aids as a tinnitus de treatment device. Next slide. Um, Phonak is, and Oticon are two major hearing aid companies, well-respected around the world. And they each have special programs that you purchase with the hearing aid. It's all part of the the hearing aid itself, to manage your tinnitus. So again, this is a proven by research and it's very, very effective. It will help your hearing, but it'll also help you um, with your tinnitus. Next slide. Okay, so my little introduction has come to an end. I'll simply summarize by saying, if you have bothersome tinnitus, don't be discouraged. Don't give up hope. There's plenty of management options available for you. Everyone with tinnitus can get to the point where it's no longer concerning them. It's no longer bothersome. So now we'll open up the, uh, the little uh, session, live session to questions. All right. Um, thank you, Dr. Hall, for that enlightening presentation. And I hope all of you watching here were also enlightened. Uh, towards the end of our webinar today, we'll be answering questions in the comment section. So feel free to comment your questions and we'll get back to you later. 
Uh, for now, for our next segment, it's our phone in live questions. We actually pre selected two hearing impaired or tinnitus patients that will be joining us now. Um, for our first caller, we have Miss Adeline, and she is one of our patients from our, our Alabang clinic. Uh, may we have her, Miss Miss Adeline? Yes, Paul, good evening. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Sorry. Um, maybe I take your mic. Hello, everyone. Yes, Paul. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Hall is ready mm -hmm. to answer your question. Uh, this this question is a very common question. How to address tinnitus spikes, especially in quiet places, or when tinnitus uh, is heard early in the morning? Well, I've I've really um, started to answer that question already in the uh, presentation. This is a, always a common problem. When you're in a very quiet place, it's obviously um, very easy for you to hear the tinnitus. In fact, it's hard to ignore it. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you introduce some type of pleasant sound whenever you're in a quiet place. There are desktop sound generators. You can where use mu music in the background. Uh, some people um, connect their smartphone uh, to their ears with ear uh, buds. And, and there are some tinnitus apps that you can download for free that will uh, allow you to listen to soft, pleasant sounds that kind of disrupt your ability to hear the tinnitus. And then, as I mentioned, the sound pillow, which is very inexpensive, uh, you can purchase online, and that will also address this problem of increased tinnitus at certain times in the day when it's very quiet. Now, in terms of the second part of the question, what is the best treatment for tinnitus that's caused by hearing loss? The, a hearing aids, appropriate well-fit hearing aids are certainly the best starting point. Um, hearing aids do not return your hearing to normal, uh, but they will reduce a lot of the stress and frustration of attempting when you're trying to hear something and, you, and, and somebody speak, but uh, you can't hear them clearly and, you, and it, they're not loud enough. The hearing aid will allow you to hear more easily and that will, when you remove the stress, you make hearing easier, that automatically begins to reduce the tinnitus. So, um, I and you must use the hearing aids on a regular basis, not just once or twice a week, but on a regular daily basis to get the most benefit. Actually, I'd like to add to it. Um, Dr. Molly, I heard about the hearing aid. Actually, many of the patients we see, um, we, deal, we usually see uh, our patients, um, we have a lot of hearing patients, and when they come into the clinic, for um, and they have bothersome tinnitus and of course hearing loss, and when they are fitted with hearing aids, actually some, um, most of the time we don't even turn on the tinnitus maskers yet in the hearing aid, but then once they start wearing the hearing aids, and you know when they when they start hearing the new sound, well not it's not really new sounds, but when they start mm -hmm. hearing right. the, um, the sounds around. Um, then, you know, the tinnitus gets messed out. They're buried somewhere there already. But then when patients start thinking, you know, where did my tinnitus go? And then they, they sort of like, you know, start hearing it again. But because of like the sounds sort of reheard by using the hearing aid, then it gets masked out. The, the tinnitus gets masked out until, you know, the hearing sounds to the hearing aid become already normal. To them. Yes, actually... That's a very good point, Lisa. And you reminded me to comment that hearing aids and amplification of everyday sounds, the birds chirping, people talking, even sounds like a refrigerator making noise or, or traffic noise, those are all natural sounds. And, and that's what your brain will focus on, not the tinnitus. But the amplification, the hearing aids will be most beneficial to help you the most after you first receive some counseling. The audiologist must first convince you through counseling that they, you don't need to worry about the tinnitus, that you shouldn't be trying to listen to it. You shouldn't be focusing on it. It's just another sound. It's just another sound that you can notice and then ignore. 
So the counseling really helps a person get the most out of hearing aids uh, as a treatment or management for tinnitus. All right. Now here we have a, you want me to read this next question, Lisa? Uh, actually, um, I think- Or do the, we have the person who asked it? Yes, Adeline Spinnett. And um, the, the second caller is Miss, um, unless Miss Adeline, you still have another question, if none. All right, we'll go to the next caller, um, who is Miss Mary, right? She has a question. Okay. Let me go to Miss Mary. Um, other, um, Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hello. Yeah, yes, we, we can, can hear you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to ask a question tonight to our speaker. My question is, I heard about the good benefits of stem cell therapy for tinnitus, but I'm not sure what to use. Either a stem cell X-wave patch or a stem cell capsule. What is your recommendation? How long do we need to take it? Okay, that's a very, very interesting question. The question about stem cell therapy. In, in um, working with people who have bothersome tinnitus, uh, we audiologists always want to make sure that whatever we recommend, whatever suggestions we give to a person are supported by research findings. In other words, we practice what's called evidence-based audiology. We want to make sure that the evidence, the research evidence is supporting our recommendations. At this time, 2021, Stem cell therapy is not a proven approach for the management of tinnitus. Remember, tinnitus is a symptom. It's not the cause or the reason a person has tinnitus. It varies. It's different from one person to the next. So before we even can determine how the tinnitus should be managed, we need to evaluate the patient and find out why they have the tinnitus. Um, for example, if a person has a hearing loss, perhaps be due to aging or being around noise, uh, stem cell therapy is not really the answer. Amplification and hearing pleasant everyday sounds is going to be far more effective. So at this point, we don't really have enough evidence to support stem cell therapy. It's very promising. It may be useful in the future for some people who have tinnitus. Um, but at this point, I do not recommend it. I don't know of any audiologist or ear, nose, and throat doctors that at this point would um, use stem cell therapy as their primary management technique for a person with tinnitus. Yes. Dr. Harold, um, we see on the ads like the patches, those tinnitus patches. Mm -hmm. So what, what's your take on that? Yeah. Um, I don't mean to sound critical or skeptical, but there are many advertisements for tinnitus treatments. There are literally hundreds of substances which are being sold to people. People are paying for them. And the promise is this will help your tinnitus. Um, these substances, sometimes they're over the counter. Sometimes you, you have to order them online. They're not proven. Uh, right now, aside from melatonin, which I've already mentioned, there are no substances or patches or pills, tablets, capsules that will quote unquote treat tinnitus or cure it. Tinnitus is not a disease. It's not like uh, you have a specific um, ailment that is always successfully treated with this particular um, strategy. So I'm, I would be very skeptical if I were you, any, anyone with bothersome tinnitus should be very, very skeptical of any device or any pill or any patch that is uh, supposed to treat their tinnitus. Find out if there's some research in support of it. Right now, there's plenty of research going on in an, to, to prove what works and what doesn't work for tinnitus, but I am not aware of stem cell patch or capsule that has been proven to help people, all people with tinnitus. Well, okay, thank you very much. Um, that was uh, Miss Mary. And um, for now, we've uh, taken uh, 
questions from the comments, from the live comments? <clears throat> yeah, there is a first question. What is the best sound remedy of clinics? From Ms. Diana de las Reyes. Okay. Um, the word best in that question, what is the best sound remedy for tinnitus, is, is an important word. Everybody is different. Everybody is an individual. Each person who has tinnitus is different from the next. So there is no single best sound remedy. The best sound remedy is, this, is the sound that for that particular person, for you, um, removes the tinnitus from your everyday perception. In other words, you don't hear it very often. For some people, um, soft noise, white noise, kind of just shh, kind of ocean type noise is very effective. For other people, music uh, will reduce their ability to hear the tinnitus. Uh, for other people, it may be hearing everyday sounds through amplification that you're missing because you have a hearing loss. So the, the best sound is the sound that helps you the, the most. Um, so I can't answer with any particular sound. We don't, everyone has a different type of tinnitus. Uh, tinnitus sounds vary from one person to the next. So the sound remedy for their tinnitus will, of course, that will differ from one person to the next. I would experiment, if I were you, with different types of sounds and listen to the sound. It doesn't have to be loud. Very soft sound in the background often is totally uh, adequate in eliminating your ability to be bothered by the tinnitus or to hear the tinnitus. You may always hear a, a slight bit of tinnitus, but as long as it's not interfering with your day-to-day -day life, as long as it's not worrying you, it's not making you aggravated or irritated, then uh, that tinnitus sound is not causing you any problems. Okay, thank you for that. Now for our next question. Uh, what, what hearing aid is available in the Philippines that is good for tinnitus? Well, Mr. Ralph, uh, it affects it. Okay, well, of course, I am not in the Philippines. I'm in the United States, but I'll answer that question anyway. What uh, hearing aid is available in the Philippines that's good for tinnitus? To be honest with you, uh, if you have uh, tinnitus sounds in your ears and you have some degree of hearing loss, and most people who have uh, tinnitus that's bothering them will have some hearing loss, even though it might be very, very slight, whatever hearing aid will help your hearing will help your tinnitus. Um, and that's where you need to go to an audiologist who is an expert with hearing aids. You talked about two um, companies, two brands of hearing aids, Phonak and Oticon. They're both excellent hearing aids uh, companies, but you want to have a hearing aid that is a custom fit for you, that provides you with just the sound you need to hear uh, without any effort and to hear as well as you possibly can. That's the hearing aid that is good for your tinnitus. So again, this is one of these questions where it's one size does not fit all. I can't say, well, this hearing aid is the best for everyone. Um, you want to make sure that first you are evaluated properly by an audiologist, that the audiologist determines that a hearing aid would be appropriate, and then that you um, are, are uh, given a hearing aid that is most appropriate for your hearing loss. Uh, and that hearing aid is the hearing aid that will help you the most in uh, with your tinnitus. Yeah, um, yes, Dr. Hall, yeah. The hearing care specialist, so first, um, yeah, Dr. Hall is right, you know. Um, there are many hearing aids, but the important thing is that the hearing aid, the hearing care specialist would fit properly the hearing aid according to your hearing loss, according actually to your lifestyle. Um, also, very important is according to your case history, you know, how you obtained that hearing loss and also how you obtained, I mean, you know, to evaluate, to ask you questions about your tinnitus and to be able to fit that hearing, tailor fit that hearing aid according to, you know, because um, uh, we do an, a holistic approach, you know, it's not just like uh, we look at the audiogram, the hearing loss um, and, and um uh, sorry, just the audiogram or the hearing, uh, hearing loss, but we also look at the lifestyle of the, of the person to see what is the best hearing aid for, for the patient. And if a person has tinnitus, uh, many of our uh, patients who have tinnitus, when they, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, after evaluating them, 
and many of them, the tinnitus is a symptom of their hearing loss. And when we fit the hearing aid, actually, you know, when they start hearing those sounds again, okay, the ones that the soft sounds they wouldn't hear before, then somehow the, the tin just gets masked out, you know. But then, of course, when they start focusing on the tinnitus again, it comes back. So, um, yes, Dr. House, right? Um, the, the hearing aid has to be fitted, custom fitted um, for you. Okay. So, that was, for, that was a much better answer, Lisa, than I could provide. That was an excellent uh, answer yeah. to that. That question. Yeah, because like you know, we deal with these like hearing aid patients a lot, and you know, and 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 many of them really have they come in, and many of them one of the com most common symptoms is is uh, tinnitus, and which is you know really um, age related hearing loss is usually accompanied with tinnitus, and you know, um, yeah. So when they they wear hearing aids, um, yeah, many like also not. I'm sorry, it doesn't go away. It just gets masked out by the new sounds or the mm -hmm. sounds. Yeah. So anyway, we'll go to the next question. So uh, in in Filipino, gagaling po gagaling po ba ang tinnitus? Will tinnitus be cured, Doctor Hall? From um, question by Mr. Alec Riley. Well, to be very honest with everyone, I don't know what. Gagaling Poba is. I have not heard of it. It's not well, you need to be cured. That's the um, translation. I see. Okay. At first, I thought it was some type of su substance like uh, ginkgo uh, biloba. No. no. Um, that's an interesting question. Um, the term cure uh, kind of implies that you'll, you'll take a pill or you'll undergo surgery and suddenly the problem will be gone. It'll be removed. But if we use the word cure to mean that you are no longer bothered by this problem, it's no longer a help problem for you, uh, it, then, um, then the answer is yes. Um, I would encourage you to think about other health problems you might have. Maybe you had strained your back when you were lifting something heavy, or maybe you twisted your ankle um, when you were stepping off a curb. And initially it, it keeps you from doing what you like to do in your life. It interferes with your day-to-day -day existence. In fact, even at night when you're trying to sleep, you might be thinking about that pain. But with therapy and with time, perhaps um, with uh, some medication, that problem becomes uh, managed effectively to the point where maybe your back hurts a little bit. Maybe if you, put a lot of pressure on your ankle, you can still feel a little bit of discomfort, but it's no longer an issue. You don't think about it every day. You've moved on. Uh, it's not something that you're concerned about. And so if you say that's a cure, that's a treatment, that's effective management, then the answer is yes, tinnitus can almost always be cured. So we need to think about the ultimate goal. Is tinnitus now bothering you? Is it interfering with your ability to sleep? Is it keeping you from concentrating? Is it making you less happy? And we can always, with proper management, answer that question. No, it isn't. The tinnitus is now properly managed. So essentially, the tinnitus is cured. All right. Thank you. Uh, for our next question, how do you treat tinnitus that is caused by... A Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry again. Um, how do you treat tinnitus that is caused by suspected musculoskeletal disorder? Tin for example, tinnitus sound changes when I move my neck a certain direction. Sorry, I'm I'm reading some something that was sent to me. <laughs> but the that's okay. That's a good question. Right. We'll answer this one first. Okay. Um, how do you treat tinnitus that is caused by suspected muscus? musculoskeletal disorder. For example, tinnitus sound changes when I move my neck a certain direction by Jed Santos, Mr. Jed Santos. So we'll answer that one first. Sure. First of all, if, if the person asking that question were in my office, my clinic, I would, uh, I would reassure them that this has been reported. They're not the only person to have this experience where moving the head in a certain direction or putting a little bit of pressure on, a, on the neck will modify the tinnitus. It may make the tinnitus sound louder or it may make the tinnitus 
softer. It may even eliminate the tinnitus. Um, we know that this is not causing the tinnitus. The musculoskeletal disorder is associated with the tinnitus. Um, so the, in other words, the brain uh, is noticing that there's something different in the neck area, wherever the muscular, muscular skeletal disorder is. And then the brain starts to conduct a little bit of an inventory. It looks, well, are we having any problems anywhere else? Ah, there's a sound coming from the ear as well. So if we can eliminate or reduce the musculoskeletal disorder, the um, maybe facial pain or joint pain, whatever it might be, then we're automatically going to minimize the tinnitus. So my first recommendation for anyone, even when people have temporal mandibular joint disorder, that's another example of a musculoskeletal disorder. The first step, I explain tinnitus. I talk about why people have it. I evaluate their hearing, person's hearing. But then I say, let's get the best management we can for this other problem, the musculoskeletal disorder. Go to the specialist, whether it's a dentist or a oral surgeon or a physical therapist or a physiatrist or a neurologist, go to the physician or healthcare professional who can help you with that disorder. And almost always that will help you with your tinnitus. So we don't treat just one or the other. We approach the, uh, the entire range of problems a person might be having. Um, if if the moving a neck in a certain direction produces more tinnitus, then there's, there's something that needs to be addressed first before we uh, talk about the tinnitus, because that's not a normal phenomenon. Most people move their neck and it doesn't affect their tinnitus. There are parts of the brain where there's communication between the hearing part of the brain where tinnitus is located and the muscle parts of the brain. And so dealing with the muscle problem first will almost always help with the tinnitus. All right. Okay, next question, please. There. Oh, what can you say about asymptomatic tinnitus? Okay, hey, I would say that um, let's just define asymptomatic uh, uh, symptomatic tinnitus. That is, tinnitus that a person hears, um, yeah. but it's not really a symptom of any obvious uh, neurological problem or, or hearing problem or ear problem. Uh, many people hear tinnitus. I hear tinnitus right now because I'm talking about tinnitus. Uh, and many people who hear tinnitus make note of it. They say, oh, I'm hearing that sound. And then they go on and they don't even hear it. Uh, so in that respect, the tinnitus uh, that a person has is asymptomatic because it's really not a symptom of anything um, that's of any concern. A study was done back in 1953 many, many years ago, over uh, almost 70 years ago. And that study showed that when you put a person, just a regular old person, they don't have tinnitus, they have no problems with their ears, they have no hearing loss. You put them in a very, very quiet room. Uh, most of the time, they will actually hear sound in their ears. So tinnitus is really a normal sensation. In other words, almost everybody will hear tinnitus in a perfectly quiet place. So asymptomatic tinnitus. Tinnitus is not a symptom of a hearing loss or any other um, problem, any other disease. is really not of a concern. A little bit of counseling, surrounding yourself with soft sound will probably be all that you need to do uh, because the tinnitus is not really a health problem. All right. Well, um, sorry. The next question does COVID vaccine cause tinnitus? I had my vaccine last September after a week, so I noticed my right ear ringing. I'm not under the, any medication and I'm not exposed to loud, loud noises at home or at work. Is there any, has there, there been any study on, you know, COVID and okay. hearing That's loss? Been a study on COVID and hearing loss? And That's COVID a fascinating question. Yeah, very good question. So, well, uh, it, it's very interesting. I'm, um, I'm now editing a book about tinnitus. I'm, the book is almost ready to be published. And um, this process started about, a, about two years ago before COVID. And then when there was the COVID pandemic really started to become obviously a problem around the world, 
uh, my co-editor and I said, let's, let's get a chapter on COVID and tinnitus. Uh, now, I didn't expect there, there'd be much information on it. There's a lot of information. People immediately started to study COVID and tinnitus, that relationship. Um, it turns out that some people who contracted COVID uh, virus and who really were sick definitely had ear problems and definitely had tinnitus. But as for the vaccine, any of the available vaccines, there is, to my knowledge, no link between the vaccine or getting vaccinated and tinnitus. But here's what often happens. When you are getting a COVID vaccine, you're going to some center, maybe a doctor's office, you're going to get a shot. You start thinking more about your health. You start thinking, some, even subconsciously, without being aware, you start thinking, well, I hope this will keep me from getting COVID. Maybe I can get out and associate with other people more. Now I'll be protected. You're thinking about your health constantly as you get that COVID vaccine. That's why you're getting the vaccine. You're wanting to preserve your good health, prevent uh, uh, contracting COVID. And as you start thinking about your health, uh, if you already are hearing tinnitus, if, if the tinnitus is there, but you're really not paying attention to it, you'll start focusing your attention on it. As Lisa said several times, you may not be hearing your tinnitus and until you say, wait, I'm not hearing my tinnitus. And then of course you do hear it. Uh, because you're concentrating on it. So I don't know of any link between a vaccination and tinnitus. I can't see how that could possibly be related um, because it would have to affect the ear in some way or the brain, and it really does. COVID can, but not the vaccination. So I think that you began to notice the ringing in your ear, and it was yeah, almost it a coincidence because you were thinking more about your health when you got the vaccinated, vaccination. Yeah. And then as I read, uh, well, as I read that, that question, he said that um, notice ringing on his right ear. So I'm just wondering, like. Yeah. The first thing I would recommend, Lisa, would be to go to a hearing healthcare professional and get an evaluation. Perhaps there is a problem with the right ear that can be addressed, um, yes. but it's not the vaccination. The vaccination triggered the thoughts about the tinnitus, in my opinion. Okay. All right. Um, Sorry. Oh, there. Are there things that make tinnitus worse from Miss Nicole? Yeah, there are things that make tinnitus more noticeable. Uh, definitely. We've already talked about some of them. Uh, first, being in a very quiet place. When you're in a very quiet location, your brain will focus more attention on the tinnitus because there's, there's no sound around you to distract you from the tinnitus. We've talked about um, noise, being around loud noise or music. Uh, that can certainly bring the tinnitus to a higher level. The loud sound, whether it's music or noise, is uh, stimulating the inner ear. It might even be traumatizing the uh, inner ear temporarily. And that, of course, can produce tinnitus. Uh, we know that certain medications, certain drugs for high blood pressure, certain drugs for, for infections, and many, many drugs can temporarily make the tinnitus louder. We know that stress and fatigue are associated with tinnitus being louder. So the more you, the better the night's sleep, the more you can reduce stress, the more you can exercise, the more you can find relaxing activities to be involved in, the lower the tinnitus perception. So yes, tinnitus can, sounds can go, become louder and softer um, depending on what's happening in your life at the time. But it's very important. And when I counsel patients, I emphasize, these are just temporary fluctuations. Even people who are not by the, bothered by the tinnitus will at some time say, I wish that sound would go away. But it will. It, tinnitus doesn't get progressively quote unquote worse or doesn't progressively get louder and it doesn't stay louder. It fluctuates based on what's happening in your life at any particular time. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for that. So for the next question, thank you, Professor Hall, for a very interesting webinar. For a 50-year-old female patient with persistent tinnitus, 
But no hearing loss most commonly experienced before sleeping is a hearing aid masker, a tinnitus masker, advisable, or a tinnitus pillow, um, or a tinnitus pillow will suffice um, from Ms. Reggie. Yes, if you've had a hearing evaluation, a hearing assessment, and your ears are normal, and this is not uncommon, keep a um, number of patients with bothersome tinnitus or who notice tinnitus, who hear tinnitus most of the time, it's persistent, do not have a hearing loss, or at least do not have a hearing loss that requires a hearing aid. They may not have perfectly normal ears, but uh, they don't have much of a hearing loss. Um, usually, in that case, reading a little bit about tinnitus, understanding that it's not a major concern, it's not something that needs to be uh, evaluated by a physician, it's not uh, a sign of some disease or pathology, just a little reading like that, and then sound therapy. You mentioned a tinnitus pillow, a sound pillow. That probably will be adequate. Um, that will probably um, be sufficient so that you're not no longer having difficulty with your tinnitus or difficulty sleeping because of your tinnitus. So my whole approach for helping people is to give the person just the help they need, but no more. There's no sense in, in going to great extremes to manage tinnitus when a few simple steps will be adequate. Yes. All right. Um, the sound pillow. Um, I'm actually not sure if it's available here. Uh, well, I haven't really checked the online shops like Lazada or Shopee. Yeah. But I remember in, in one reading, I, some readings actually that I read, you know, like just having like your phone, you know, um, if you just download mm -hmm. um, sounds from the, your phone, like um, ocean sounds, uh, what else? Ocean sounds, very relaxing sounds, that white noise. Um, Oh, uh, what else? Rain, you know, rain and mm -hmm. also very soft. Like, like a stream or a, a, a river or a stream making it noises over rocks or a fountain. Yeah, there yeah. are many apps. If I would encourage everybody to just go to the app store and put tinnitus apps. Many of them are free. Um, and you'll find that some of them are just for a while, they'll be so interesting, you won't even hear the tinnitus. And then you can switch to another sound if you wish. The sound pillows, uh, you certainly can get them online. Um, and, and you can also buy sound devices, not pillows, but just little devices that you can place on your desk in many major uh, stores where uh, home products are sold. Yes, yes. Um, actually, there's another question here. Do you have to fit hearing aid even if there's no hearing loss? No, that's a good question. Um, it, there's, in most cases, the answer is no. In most cases, if there's no hearing aid, a loss, the hearing aid would be not be necessary, but there are devices that are not hearing aids that will also produce soft, pleasant sounds all the time. I would, with someone who does not have a hearing loss, I would encourage um, some type of smartphone uh, app approach that we just discussed and take the other steps um, because most of the time they will be successful. Um, if you did use a hearing aid, uh, even though you didn't have a hearing loss, you'd be mostly using the tinnitus portion uh, software, not the actual amplification. You wouldn't want to be, one danger that you always need to consider is we don't want to over amplify. We don't want to take somebody with normal hearing and have them suddenly hear sounds too loudly because that actually could make them hear tinnitus more, not less. Yes. Um, all right, I think those are our questions and we need to wrap up already because it's mm -hmm. almost nine o'clock. And so thank you everyone for being part of our Facebook live event tonight, <clears throat> Here to Ape, and that's our topic for tonight's tinnitus. And we hope we answered, all, Dr. Halls was able to answer all your questions about tinnitus. But uh, sadly, that's about all the time we have. So Dr. Hall, thank you so much for joining us and we had a great time. Um, asking questions, and I hope that you also had a great time, you know, answering our questions. Yeah. It was a very interesting and enjoyable experience, and I hope it was helpful for everybody that tuned in or anyone who listens to this recording. All right, yeah. So again, thank you all for joining us, and if you have any more questions, feel free to ask our Facebook forum, Hearing Wellness Forum by Manila Hearing Aid, or um, you can also comment there in our Facebook page at Manila Hearing Aid. And of course, thank you very much to our guest speaker, Dr. Hall. We are graced with your presence for tonight. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank Bye you now. so much. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dr. Hall. Goodbye. And bye, everyone. Good night. Good night.